Hey everybody, CBQ from Greensy here, back with another series on how it works. Today we're talking about robot localization. So robot localization, this refers to the ability for a robot to find or localize where it is in its environment. Robots do that with a, with a variety of sensors, and this mower is re retrofitted with our Green Z Autopilot kit, which enables auto striping, and thus it is a robot. And before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about how localization itself works. So imagine that you're a human and you wake up and you have no senses. Your, your, your eyes are not working, you don't know where you are, and you sort of say, okay, I booted up. Okay, if you were able to walk three steps forward, right, towards the camera, I could actually say, you know what, I think I'm three steps forward. Robots do this with odometry. We, we call that, uh, whenever the wheels turn, we measure that, so we can measure odometry. So if you just started with odometry and that was all you measured, when you went forward, you could very reasonably know if you were had real accurate measurements of the wheels. But if, you, uh, if the wheels slip, which they do when they turn, you can imagine that when you turn, you might be facing this way, but the robot might actually be facing this way. So what we do is we shore that up with another sensor called an inertial motion unit. Now we have a high grade professional IMU on this. It's an inertial measurement unit, I believe is the name of it. And that measures roll, pitch, yaw. This is a nine axis one. Uh, and it can do a lot of other sophisticated stuff, but we fuse that together with odometry. So now imagine that we take that same turn. We know how, many the, how much the wheels have turned in odometry. And we also combine that with a high accuracy grade of saying, you know, you think you're about 90 degrees, but you're actually 92. So it fuses that together. Now, that's pretty good. And in fact, we can do really well with that. We can, you know, go out, do squares and come around and we've tuned that pretty well. Next up, you fuse that with something that is discrete, meaning uh, it is non-continuous, such as a GPS unit. Now, this is a centimeter level GPS. Uh, it's from Emelid and it uses RTK, which is real-time kinematics, to get centimeter level accuracy along with the base station. And when you fuse that, now we have globally accurate positioning that we can fuse together with where the robot thinks it is. Now what happens is pretty interesting. We're, we're going along, we know how fast we're going, and the GPS goes out for whatever reason, under tree cover, too bumpy, whatever, for whatever reason. When that GPS goes out, we're still relying on the fact that we're turning and we know that we're going five meters a second or however fast. We also know from our velocity measurements and our turning, so we don't freak out. And in fact, uh, we've been operating sometimes when the GPS has gone completely out and then finally comes back in and it fuses the information back. So the, the robot is able to localize or figure out where it is. The other things we're adding are some visual odometry, which works really well when the robot is um, driving and has visual markers and that works actually what's neat about that is that it works in conjunction with GPS really well because when the GPS goes out it's usually because you've got visual markers tree cover that kind of thing uh, but all that combines to give the robot a good sense of where it is in the world so that's robot localization uh, tune in next time for another series on how it works I'm CBQ with Greensy have a good one